My name is Nelago. In Oshiwambo, it means lucky. Nelago Kuedi grew up in a village in Ondangwa, a region of northern Namibia, far from the big cities and a long way from the sea. However, she's the first Namibian woman to earn the title of ship's captain. Her grandmother's over 100 years old. She's perhaps the last port of call, the true homecoming. Here they are very little, but they lack for nothing. This is a house where I grown up. This is a village whereby we don't buy food. Life is in the village, it's very cheap, but you have to be a hard worker. So this is a place whereby we keep our food. And this is our food, we call it omahango. We have to go and pound it to make porridge for us to eat. This is a place where it's very peaceful. Okay, this is my grandmother. Oh, kuku. Kuku, eh? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Nalago's parents live a few kilometers from here. Their daughter's visit today has brought together neighbors and relatives. When I was one years old, my mother gave me to my grandmother to raise me up. I thought she didn't love me, but she wanted me to be trained to be a strong woman. Oh, <laughs> Okay. I belong to this land and although I am far from home, my heart never left this place. But I went away to look for a green pasta. And whenever I came to visit my family and friends, we celebrate a great party. In my land, when somebody prospers, it affects the whole community. Among the people who are there to welcome Nalago is Hosea, her former teacher. <laughs> but today, an opportunity awaits Nilago and anyone else who wishes to follow in her footsteps. It lies 1,300 kilometers to the south and on the other side of the desert in Lutheritz. It's a journey that starts here, in the wildest part of the country. In a region of Africa that is, well, a little more Africa. The Atosha National Park is one of the largest in the world, 
Its surface area is slightly smaller than that of Galicia, but 114 species of mammals and 340 types of birds live here. It's my honor to be here today at Toshopan. It is just my dream come true. And now I am at the water point whereby I have to see the animals with my naked eyes. Wow, now look at the giraffe now, it's drinking different animals. My favorite spring book, wow. Oh, it's my day today and I'm so full of joy. In this region, most people don't have an opportunity to know this amazing place. As a human being, it is our responsibility to take care of nature. It is our best heritage. Etosha, which in the local language means the great white place, remains an unspoiled paradise. When it comes to crossing this territory, it's a good idea to look at the bigger picture. From the air, you can see everything more clearly. The deserts are part of the country's identity. It's impossible to cross Namibia without taking a look at the sea of dunes that dominates the landscape. Here, the sand stretches right to the coast. But in this eternal dialogue between desert and ocean, Nilago's eyes are always on the sea. The coast of the skeletons is a harsh, unforgiving place. Many a brave adventurer has met their match in these treacherous currents. And more than one ship lies here. Stranded in time in a watery grave. The Namib Desert is the oldest in the world. And if you get to the heart of Sosuzvle, you may decide it's also the most beautiful. The very history of Namibia is written in the sands of the desert. Only a few can survive its climate. But even the acacias can succumb to drought. These trees died more than 600 years ago. But here they remain still standing among some of the highest sand dunes on the planet. In Namibia, it's having a big desert. Beautiful and with less population. And I love my country. And look at this wonderful place. My life is like this desert. It is beautiful, but it is not easy. You have to work hard and more if you are a woman. You don't have to give up. Life is not the destination. It is a journey. It does not matter how far you get. Only when you make your own way, you get perspective. I was born in the interior of Namibia. But I don't know why I feel the call of the sea. The fishing industry has made the city of Luderitz what it is today. 
just like it has brought Nilago to the shores of the Atlantic. Ever since a tobacco merchant named Adolf Luderitz came to this place in 1883, the city that bears his name has withstood wars and diseases. Many of the buildings have been standing for more than a hundred years. Even today the German modernist architecture is visible, a symbol of the prosperity of the early 20th century. And why here, in this remote part of Namibia, sandwiched between sea and desert? The answer is simple, the sparkling allure of diamonds. But the fate of this city was inextricably entwined with that of the precious mineral. And the diamonds gradually disappeared. A few kilometers from Luderitz is Kolmanskop. Today, it's a ghost town. During the First World War, German settlers extracted more than a thousand kilos of diamonds from here. The city had a casino, a ballroom, several mansions and a hospital that boasted the continent's first X-ray machine. They used it to check whether workers had swallowed any diamonds before leaving the city. Nowadays, there's no one here. Time is returning to the desert what was once its own. The sand creeps between the houses to remind us that greed leaves nothing in its wake. In order to avoid ending up like Kolmanscope, the pioneers who settled in Luderitz turned to the fishing industry as their hope for the future. It's been a long time since anyone lived in the ghost town of Kolmanscope. However, today, Luderitz has become a prosperous city of 25,000 inhabitants, most of whom owe their livelihoods to fishing. In 1991, thanks to the vision of the entrepreneurs who dared to dream, the first fish processing factory was built. Today, Luderitz retains an air of its former solemnity, but now it's also a place where people come first. Nelago's determination is an example for her family. And she knows that in Luderitz, education is available to everyone. The city has recreational parks that owe their existence to the prosperity of fishing. Manu is one of the people responsible for making Luderitz a better place nowadays. Here children have time to be children. We identify where there are needs within our community and we realize that children in this area need a place like this. And uh, so we decided to put up uh, this playground, which was a very, very, which was very, very appreciated by the parents because now whenever the parents are looking for their kids, they know where to go and look for and search for their kids. This place was called a ghost town. In fact, it was like uh, a forgotten place. But after independence, when Nova Name came here, people started to flock to come and search for jobs. And uh, as a result, this place become, uh, was actually revived. The fishing industry is committed to the Namibian community, its workers and their children. Pescanova employs more than 2,000 people in the country. It has provided land to build homes for its employees and has built playgrounds and a nursery school to take care of the younger members of the community. We are here at Kretsch Community Centre. This is a place where the future of our children starts. And here I am with Miss Yvonne. 
she has been in charge of this place for many years. <laughs> Yvonne has been working here since the beginning. She started out as a cleaner, but she's also been a cook and a teacher, but now she's the director of the center. A whole life dedicated to children. A dream come true. In the beginning, it was only a place for street children to give them food and get them off the streets. Now, it's a crest, it's a school where the kids can learn. Uh, we are also giving them fish uh, three times a week. We are giving them fish because it's good for the health. We are also giving them porridge in the mornings because not all of them can afford to give the kids uh, some food to come to school. And you know, when you are hungry, you can learn fast. <laughs> These children, I see them that as educated persons. You see them, uh, doctors, lawyers, you name it. <laughs> but they are the future. These kids are the future. The children are a reminder that the future of any city starts with childhood. 143 children of different ages, eight employees, four of them teachers, attend this center every day. Fishing has brought with it more than well-being and progress. It has brought work and education from two years onwards that trains people like Hamble. She grew up in this nursery school and today she works supervising the production line of the main fishing company. The people that took care of us here, they made us feel at home. They prepared us everything that our parents do for us at home. They nurture us, they put us to sleep, they gave us food, they gave us things to do just to keep us busy. But this crash taught me a lot about self-esteem. It taught me to put my education first. And also in that way, they groomed me to become the person I am today. Hamble knows that without the blessing of the sea, this nursery wouldn't exist. And she would probably not be in Lutheritz either. The ocean for me is life. And what the ocean does for the people around, it's amazing. Look. The fish that is produced in the ocean, it gets to the factory, the production goes on, people are employed, and also we are making use of the fish so that we can put it into our daily nutrition, daily diet. The local fish diet is not just for the children and workers of the fishing industry. In a country where the custom is to eat meat, the community of Luderitz has grown accustomed to eating fish. As Elizabeth knows only too well, she's worked in this fish market since it opened in 1996, but things were very different then. 22 years ago was small. There, small, like only one, one fruit, that one. And there was only two workers that time. Three workers, yeah. Two ladies and one man. Mm -hmm. Now we are seven workers. So we, was, we will grow, grow and grow every year. We're sending fish to Aus, Batani, Ruderitz, all the outside towns. I cannot imagine Ruderitz without fish. People will get hungry, people will get sick because fish is healthy. And I like my job. I like to keep people happy. <laughs> That's why they come back. To ensure that the fish market continues to make Elizabeth's customers happy, someone has to get the fish out of the water. We are here at the nest store where we get our fishing net and here are the net which made by hand and these are some of the people who knows more about this interesting job. 
Thomas Pietrus has been sewing fishing nets for 20 years. He's been here since the workshop was created. And another eight craftsmen like him help make the nets. Years ago, they were manufactured and repaired in Spain. Today, they're all manufactured and repaired here. Materials have been improving to reduce consumption and help the sustainability of fishing. The nets are not the only thing that has changed. Innovation is essential if you want to advance. Unlike diamonds, fish are here to stay and the boats will go out fishing tomorrow. The arrival of the fishing industry in Luderitz brought with it jobs for many people, some of whom hold positions of great responsibility in the company. How must I do? Hi Nola, how are you? I'm good. Very well, thank you. Okay, let me introduce you to my boss. It's Master Edwin Kamatoto. It's the director of the company I am working for. Now, as Namibians, as uh, Nelago is putting it, we have opportunities to work for the fishing industry. And when you work hard, you are dedicated, you are committed to the company that you are working for. You are able to make it high and you will be able to fly high. Brigitte also worked in Novanam for several years. She worked her way up from the bottom with unwavering determination. Now she's deputy mayor of the city. I'm excited about the growth of this town. And as I've mentioned, the fishing industry, we mainly rely on our fishing industry. And I can just say the future looks definitely bright for Ludritz. Not only does the local community of Luderitz prosper, women like Nilago are taking the initiative. We must get away from the syndrome that we think that men must be in charge. And also, what I want to add is, in Ludritz, ever since independence, there has always just been women as mayors in, in charge of this town. So I believe women is, is, is the ones that can take business, the town, industries to the next level. Here, everyone talks about the future, a future based on fishing, a prosperous city led by women, one that sets an exceptional example for the entire African continent. Maybe this is the best possible legacy that Nelago's son could inherit. I would teach my son Innocent to respect the elder and nature because we all will become elder and we all belong to nature. So it is a way to respect ourselves. Luther, this is my town. Whenever I am in this place, I think the ocean here be calling me all the time. At the sea's edge, Nelago has found her vocation. It's time to follow the call of the ocean. for 16 years. Now I work as a first officer of a fishing boat. I have also the title of a ship captain. I am the first female Namibian to have this title. And I was born in a place where people have hard seen the sea. The crew of the Kamali will have to spend several days on the high seas and their safety on board is paramount. All of them practice emergency maneuvers. People come before fishing. The crew of the Kamali extend the Tory lines. These lines will scare the birds so that they don't get caught in the nets. The fish caught by the Kamali will be distributed all over the world. And it will no doubt help the economy of Namibia. The men who walk on the boat don't go fishing for hike or horse mackerel. They go out to fish a future to prosper.
Although the use of liquid ice in the freezer vessels is undoubtedly an important advance, Pescanova will go down in history for being the first company to deep freeze fish on board, and for revolutionizing the future of fishing in the 60s with the creation of freezer ships worldwide. However, advances in the fishing industry and improvements to the boats pale into insignificance alongside the perseverance of certain individuals. Nilago is the epitome of personal achievement, and her example is an inspiration for many men and women in her country. As I got this title as a captain, so it's more a privilege to me. And yeah, I love working with men because I'm a strong woman. Still, I love it and I like it and I'm enjoying it. You see, now I'm in the middle of the ocean and I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> because there are less people who get this honor and title. I'm very excited about women taking the lead with Nilago Kwedi being the first female in the fishing industry. Um, Therefore, I would really like to encourage the young girls to take a stand and to take the lead. We are indebted to the sea. Every day there's someone out there on the water looking for so much more than just a plate of food on the table. The sea has blessed us with fishing. That is why we must respect the inheritance of the sea, seeking balance with our planet. This isn't a story about fishing. It's a story about people. And about a city in southern Namibia that managed to be reborn from the sea. A city that conquered its own destiny because its protagonists decided to follow instead the course of their own dreams. I am Nelago, it means lucky. I have been looking for my own path in life and learned that lucky only appears when you work very hard and trust yourself.